Hello and welcome to Overdunk, the competitive Pokemon Unite podcast where I, Zoinks, or Josh, whatever you want to call me, sit down with the top teams in Pokemon Unite and discuss all things meta, ladder, tournament scene, and just what their team's looking like and what they're preparing for. And so I have the amazing pleasure of being joined by recent G4 Invitational winners, recent $5,000 richer folks, and that is going to be Team Shiny. What's up, guys? Hey. Hello, I'm, hello. <laughs> I am joined by uh, Fepi, Retsu, and Faz, so thank you for joining me, everybody. Uh, why don't we just give a quick introduction out of all three of you, just so everyone at home knows who you are on the team and everything like that. So, Fepi, why don't you start, tell me who you are, uh, like what people will know you from, and what role you play on the Team Shiny squad. Of course, uh... I'm Feppy. I'm the support player for Team Shiny. I'm most well known for inting my team's games about 80% oh, nice. of the time. An important uh, role, yeah. Oh yeah, of course, of course. <laughs> but uh, no, I'm I'm relatively new to competitive esports, so a lot of this stuff is new to me. But I'm learning as I go, and my team's helping me out a lot. It's been nice. Good stuff. Awesome. How about you, Retsu? Why do you go next? I think Retsu's <laughs> muted. Retsu. <laughs> I'm here, I'm here. Okay. Sorry, sorry. Off to a good start. So guys, I'm Red Sue, uh top laner for Team Shiny, uh, Lucario player, but known to pick out some uh, weird things in the tourney, like uh, the Chomp and Greedent. Yeah, dude, I, I, yeah. we're going to talk about that Garchomp for sure. I mean, Greedent All makes right. sense, but yeah, your Garchomp is uh, a little wild for sure. Okay, and then how about you, Faz? When are you? Uh, I'm Faz. You might know me from Valorant or Professional Overwatch. Uh, I currently play sort of everything for team shoddy of uh, anything bot lane i've played for our team <laughs> cool and yeah that's about it yeah yeah definitely the multi-class sort of sort of role on the team that makes a lot of sense okay awesome so guys uh let's just start off with the biggest thing elephant in the room other than the patch maybe because we're literally recording jeering patch night a little bit of poor planning on my part my bad uh but other than that we want to talk about your recent g4 invitational win you were one of the eight teams invited eight right not ten yeah, yeah eight, eight for sure one of the eight teams cut your way through uh, a pretty nasty bracket for sure you guys even had probably the tougher side of the bracket uh to get all the way to the end and win in a pretty awesome fashion uh playing a lot of pokemon along the way and earning yourself a pretty nice uh prize pool in that 5k so congratulations to you guys for sure i just want to talk a little bit about the um about the tournament itself you guys jumped in you were in a you were in a pool with i believe it was nine good morning and sucker bunch right uh what were your thoughts before you went into the tournament were you like we kind of got this in the bag or was there a little bit of nerves going into this uh, a tournament with like the biggest prize pool we've seen so far um i guess i'll go first um <clears throat> we have uh we discussed we we definitely think we over prepped for the tournament oh, okay yeah um, we already manifested that it would probably be a win for us gotcha so, okay. no ego stuff but uh <laughs> we're pretty confident prepping into this tournament but I yeah I'm, I'm, it was it was very fun games it's probably the most fun i've had for unite so far sweet i love the i love the one band so i didn't have to deal with d knight so <laughs> it was very fun not having to deal with a flip yeah yeah that's true actually let's let's jump onto that for a sec so the format of the tournament i mean it had group stage and then into that single elimination bracket uh we can talk about mm -hmm. that in a bit but i want to talk about this one band format so super hotly contested in uh does Pokemon Unite need a draft? Blah, blah, blah. These questions come up in every every streamer's Twitch chat, every YouTube comment section. Everyone wants to talk about draft because every MOBA we've ever played, we've already known this to be something in place. This one yeah. ban format, this blind ban, what do we think about it? What are your What is your team thoughts on it? Uh, anybody want to weigh in? Is it good? Is it bad? What do you think? Well, I personally really like the ban system. I mean... Okay. Uh... It, it, it made things very interesting because, uh, for, for sure. example, Retsu was widely considered to be a Lucario one-trick because all he's ever really played on streams or in tank team games or anything has just been Lucario. Okay. But, you know, anytime a team was banning Lucario against us, we got to show that, like, Retsu isn't just the Lucario one-trick. Yeah, that's and sweet. It, you, and you don't get to see those sort of things in most normal tournaments because, you know, Lucario is just widely considered to be the character right now yeah. for top lane. Yeah. So it was it was cool to like get to do fun things like you know pull out the Charizard jungle a couple times when <laughs> in reality we'd probably never be able to do that without bans. 
Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, Faz, any thoughts on the on the format in general, this one band kind of situation? Uh, you sort of touched on it, that it's something that's in every other MOBA, and it's yeah. definitely something that's... I think it brings a lot of uh, excitement and sure. a lot of um, prey strategy that you don't get to see in just, you know, the normal gameplay mm -hmm. or normal uh, draft system, uh, no yeah. draft system we have now. Yeah, I th that's true. I think... I think for this game, especially with uh, the amount of sort of one tricks we have, it, it was definitely exciting to see people have to yeah. play different stuff. Because yeah. a lot of people, you know, a lot of the picks that you see in tournament have been good since launch. Yeah, so, yeah, that's true. Like, like Retsu, he might have been playing Lucario since day one, but, you know, like Feppy said, you haven't seen him play anything else. And stuff like that's super interesting yeah. uh, as a player and as a spectator, I think. Oh, yeah, definitely. I, I think it breeds that interesting that we're looking for, of course. Yeah, I think that makes a ton of sense. Uh, I will bring up the counter-argument that a lot of people are saying. I won't necessarily jump on board with this agreement, but... Uh, at the moment, there's no real way to practice or, or operate in this sense, unless your team wants to scrim this specific format. Um, but other than that, there's no real position uh, to practice this in terms of ladder or just getting repetitive uses, where a lot of other MOBAs, their ranked ladder has this ban system. Uh, do you think because of that, that tournaments should still keep employing these kind of formats? Or would you rather there just be one standard format that we see on a lot of other games? Well, um, personally, you know, we, we have, we, t we are connected to a bunch of high ELO players and uh, sure. they, we all discuss about what kind of format should be followed. Okay. The, uh, the draft and the draft and band, uh, format is obviously the best way to go, but we, yeah. I think the optimal with how small the, uh, the cast yeah, members of the, the Pokemon are, I think two bands will be probably optimal right now. The best. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I like I like the two band system too. I think that would make a lot of sense. And then, would you? Sorry, Retsu, one more time. Would you want to keep it a blind band again, where you're not a able to see band? the enemy? Yeah. Um, or would you like it to snake back and forth? I think it would be better to snake back and forth. See, yeah. see what teams are banning. Uh, see what we are banning. You know, it'd be. I got you. It'd be good. Yeah. yeah, I like the idea too. I, I always get super worried that that's going to give too much uh, strength to one side or the other, but yeah. I, I, I think you're right. I, I think we need to experiment with this more and definitely actually implement it to, to see it in game. Mm -hmm. But all right, enough about format. You guys, uh, you guys clearly know the format well. You won the whole tournament. Mm -hmm. uh, so let's talk a little bit about that ban that you guys were afforded. Did you in this tournament run have like a perma ban? that you're working with in terms of every game you went into? Or did you look across at the other side, pick out the one tricks on that enemy team, and then ban those? Uh, I'll touch on it, because I had probably the most say, I would say, <laughs> out of the three of us. In the Discord. All right. It's definitely something me and Rin talked about a lot. Okay. Uh, the, the day of and just leading up to. And yeah. it was definitely on an individual basis. And it wasn't cool. really thinking about... Like, sometimes you're definitely thinking about what the other team plays. Yeah. But we're more thinking, like, what are they going to ban against us? Mm. Because they might not be strong, like, uh, to give it an example, like, if they didn't have a Lucario player, yeah, we we thought they were going to ban Lucario because we yeah. obviously have one of the best ones. Yeah, don't waste so, a ban. Gotcha. Makes so, sense. so we don't need to waste a ban on Lucario. Mm -hmm. And we can ban what else they would play top and sort of force them on a bad pick or Lucario. Right. right? Cool. That makes a lot of sense. And that's also your team, I mean, or if it's you and Rene discussing it, that's showing a lot of confidence in Retsu to be like, hey, if these meta top laners are gone, we know Retsu can still win top lane. So shout outs to you, Retsu, uh, for having the confidence of your team. That's really, really cool. Um, yeah, we, we obviously asked him before, though. We didn't force him <laughs> on anything. He, he was yeah. definitely, uh, <laughs> we asked him before every ban, like, <clears throat> even in the moment, uh, like, if we ban this and they pick this, are you okay playing this into that matchup? Stuff like that. Sure. Because, uh, for example, we knew TTV was playing Blastoise, and that's right. something that not a lot of teams played at all prior. That's so true. we had to talk to him about, like, the matchups Blastoise has against his hero pool and, uh -huh. like, what we wanted to do with that. <laughs> Yeah, that's not an easy thing to... I mean, that's pretty much all theorycraft, right? You're not running into mm -hmm. that in ladder every day in yeah. that situation. But 
Um, actually, speaking of that TTV uh, game, let's just jump into it again. Uh, I, fantastic game to watch, for sure. Uh, it, you ended up clinching it with the Charizard jungle, right? Rene was mm -hmm. not running that in lane, so a really fun way to play that game out. Uh, talk to me about that game. Is that probably like, the, is the, was that the peak of the tournament for you all? Because I think it was for me as a viewer. Uh, but was like, was that the moment that like after that game, we, yeah, we got the rest of this. No, no mm -hmm. questions asked. Um, so obviously, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So obviously, everybody was expecting the finals to be uh, Team Shiny versus TTV. Yeah, yeah. But unfortunately, they were on the same bracket as us, same side. Yeah. So um, yeah, everything. Uh, it was probably our hypers, our hyper series. Yeah, that's a good point. Febby, yeah. were you feeling the same in that in that game? I, I mean, there's just something about pulling out the other Dragon Knight, you know, <laughs> pulling out the big big fire dragon and yeah. just running that on the enemy team it just makes me happy <laughs> yeah that's true i mean being an elder gust i guess you get to enable that pokemon a lot and <laughs> one of its biggest weaknesses not being able to move fast enough you're able to circle yeah I, that, I so that's nice i i get i give him a leaf tornado and watch him rain hellfire <laughs> just, uh, yes, the good, good work, Rin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean support's gotta do what a support's gotta do right uh <laughs> that leaf tornado yeah. play Makes a lot of sense, especially when you got a Charizard who can move while attacking. Still the biggest boon of the character, but is yet to really pay off, I guess, until your tournament game. So, yeah, really nice. Again, congratulations on the G4 win. I think it was a it was a win for you guys, obviously, but just a community overall. Tons of eyes on it. Big prize pool. I think the format worked really well. I mean, yeah, I think, I think all in all, Unite is a great sign for it. Up and up. But there's more good things to come. We have your namesake, the Chanel, uh, the Chanel, the shiny finale coming up this upcoming weekend. Pretty huge tournament. You guys have been competing in most of the Emerald events this uh, this whole time, right? Or at least on some team. Cool. So I'm glad yeah, you guys we, have been grinding those. Been, out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so I think we did all of them with shiny. Yeah. I, I think sweet. we were all together when yeah, that started. Sense. Yeah. The biggest, uh, the biggest events. You got to keep pushing it. Makes a lot of sense. Cool. Um. Okay, so the finale coming up this time, biggest prize pool for sure. Um, have you guys taken a look at your side of the bracket yet <laughs> um, for what you're headed into? Yeah, yeah? I actually yeah. posted it oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. like an hour or 30 minutes before this podcast. Oh, okay, cool. So you've, you've already been, you've already been taking a look at this. Okay, cool. Let's, um, let's go ahead and pull that up on the stream actually. Uh, just so that if you're watching home, you can take a look. So team shiny, you guys are set up on the same side of the bracket as you got a lot of good teams. I mean, but there's all good teams here, right? 16 teams, they've qualified, whether through some of these big events, they're spiking those tournaments, or if you're more like an Aphelion and grinding out these smaller ones, either way, earn their place. Uh, also, just shout-outs to, to A-Drive and your team owner for just setting up a really awesome series. I think this has been a, been a ton of fun to watch, spectate, be a part of. All that being said, let's jump in. Your first matchup, you're going against Juicy Timmy's. This is like later Tofu's team, right? Have you guys played these? Have you guys played this team very much at all? Oh, there are hard counters. Hard counters? Feppy, talk to me about how oh. Juicy Timmy's is your hard counters. Oh, I don't know what it is, but we just lose to them every tourney. Uh-oh, jeez. Okay, you better be knocking oh, on no. wood, son. You got them in your <laughs> first round. <laughs> all right, Retsu, oh, no. uh, Fez, are you guys just as afraid as Juicy Timmy's as, uh, as Feppy? is or what's going on here uh juicy timmy's matt boot is my boy but uh, yeah dude. i'm not worried i'm i'm not worried too much about them no i think we got it this time around yeah you got strats for the talon jungle i that's all i know about matt boot is that that talon jungle comes out way more often than i expected yeah. To, oh so. yeah yeah okay nah, cool no, so no, you guys you guys been prepping that actually brings yeah. up a good point right so have you guys been prepping for like specific teams like doing some theory crafting around team comps things like that uh like like we talked about for the G four, um, yeah, it was just we we three crafted like what's our um, like if we ban this that, sure, uh, we'll pick a certain top laner for me or like a certain jungler. But other than that, it was mainly D knight bans and Lucario bans and stuff. So it, it wasn't too much to pull out. So gotcha. we we definitely over prepped. So. 
Okay. Um, yeah, yeah. So maybe toning that down a little bit for sure. Okay. Mm. So yeah, we have uh, past it, Juicy Timmy's, <laughs> making sure you guys do move on past that for the sake of following this bracket along. I'm gonna imagine you guys are doing so. You're facing up against either Bad Macro Flippard or Random Gaming. Bad Macro Flippard's mm. another team I want to talk to you guys about. Has been a super successful team in the history of Unite so far. They've been doing really well, but as of late, haven't been finding like the same results as they have previously last couple tournaments not as high of placings as i think they would have liked but they're still doing well um that team is there is like is that one of the teams you're worried about is the bruv mime something that team shiny has to prep around for fez you're that bot lane you're that bot lane tank a lot of the time uh when you're going up against bruv's mine what do you uh what are you thinking about in that situation uh bruv's obviously probably the scariest mind player yeah. just in the game in general uh i don't think anyone gets as much value on that character as he does no absolutely not no <laughs> his ult management is what impresses me the most like he okay. seems to always have ultimate up for every team fight basically yeah once he hits nine um yeah. i definitely think going into the tournament you know knock on wood we beat juicy tippies of course knock on wood they win obviously because they're they're actually playing a pretty good team too um, yeah, random gaming are they're playing against or they're playing against Imperial or random gaming? Which one did I? Am I missing it? Random. Okay, they're playing against random. Yeah, that's yeah. a solid team too. That's a good roster. Um, I just think that uh, it, it's it, it's a good matchup for us in other lanes, but definitely bot lane is something I personally just uh, I think it's gonna be a tough matchup for us. Yeah, because yeah, sure. they're so experienced, uh, yeah. the three of them. Yeah, that's obviously. True. Obviously, they have the history and more experience than us, I think, too, mm. just as a full squad, but I, I definitely think we can pull it out. Okay, yeah. Uh, Red Sue, you're going to be going up against Dexter in that top lane, and that is 1v1 situation. No mm. bans in this tournament, as far as I know, so you're probably going to be running in that Lucario 1v1 uh, the whole yeah. time. How do you feel about that matchup? Is Dexter, like, uh, Lucario you look up to, or do you think you kind of gap him in that top lane? Uh, definitely when I first started, when I was, uh, wasn't a huge name yet in the United scene, I, sure. I definitely looked up to Dexter because obviously the end, his first team was yeah one of the top three teams up there. They were the nice, beginning. dude. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I liked the end. They were so, a good team. But nowadays we, me and Dexter are really close. We're cool. We, we share a lot of dark tech on the Lucario. Oh, okay. <laughs> we, we, keep stuff, we keep some stuff up here, you know? So, okay. Yeah, I'm gotcha. up there going against Dexter. I, I don't really play against him much because, um. Obviously, in the G4, they had to replace uh, some of their European members, so they yeah. didn't have the full roster. Yeah, that little so bit of swap up to, for sure. Yeah, so he had to play main tank, and I went against Sanji, but mm -hmm. I look forward to playing against Dexter. I haven't played against him in a while, so uh, it'll be fun. Gotcha. Cool. Feppy, that snow points matchup, uh, the Eldegoss v. Eldegoss, if you're playing this one out, uh, how you feeling about that one? Uh, I mean, I can hold the A button down. I should be okay. Yeah, it's true. It's true. It's true. <laughs> not yeah. all. That's not all the Eldegoss matchup. Is. I mean, <laughs> it, as long as I can get my A presses in, and he can't get his A presses in, we'll be in good shape. It's gonna rely a lot more on whether or not Faz and my attacker can give me space, right? Yeah. It's not. Too, it's not too much about me at that point. I'm trying to enable them. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, that's the it's the Unite Bible, right? Just press your A buttons better than they do wins should follow no problem yeah it makes sense cool so yeah you guys have a, a a pretty nice run going on i mean you're playing a lot of really solid teams Aphelion nine who you matched up in that grand finals nine ix i really still need to figure out what their actual team name and to call them is uh a lot of good teams on the side of the bracket if you were to predict the let's do the final four um on either side of the bracket who do you think is going to be in that final four you would be facing off uh, either IX Gaming, Apes Unleashed, Failure Esports, Tamagotchi Crew. Uh, and then there's the other side of the bracket, too, if you want to look at that one. But <laughs> what do you guys uh, What do you guys think would be that, like, winner's semifinals? Hmm. Uh, Apes Unleashed, a bunch of uh, my European homies. So, Sixies, yeah. Zanti, Zervas, Chelvin. They're a really solid team. So, if they can uh, beat IX Gaming and make it through the, the ladder through um with you know two bars or it, it may be the high road ping but yeah they can make it through uh 
I, I, I'm expecting to see them. Yeah, yeah, that ping can be that can be a, a murder for sure. Yeah. But I think they, uh, yeah, you're right. They're like my, they're one of my picks to make it up there to the top four for sure. Yeah. yeah. How about that? Uh, how about that other side of the bracket? Any thoughts there, Faz or Feppy, on who you think is going to be the two teams to make it to winter semis? Uh, I actually think the bottom side of the bracket to me is pretty obvious with TTV and Ascended. Yeah. I think. Uh, Actually, the bracket above us, the, those four teams are really solid, and I don't know how it's going to go. Yeah, you guys definitely got the harder side of the bracket. I mean, <laughs> uh, it's not like this was random seeding. These were points earned, but your side of the bracket looks like a grueler for sure. But yeah, it looks like TTV versus Ascendance is going to be, is definitely the favorites to win out. I'm not saying there isn't upset potential with a team like Good Morning in that, in that s slot for sure. Uh, but yeah, definitely it looks like that's what it's going to be. But anyway, that's going to be the shiny finale coming up. It's going to be real exciting. Let's talk a little... I wanted to talk about the meta in this place that we're playing right now. Talk about this boring Dragonite meta. But honestly, we got the patch notes. <laughs> and I think we should just discuss those instead. <laughs> that seems a lot more exciting. Um, we have a few just like notes I wanted to talk on. Feppy, you were already telling me about this Gengar buff that we're seeing. The swap around. I don't think oh, yeah, that yeah. this uh, ends up being meta, but it exists for sure. Um, you might like to see, I mean, those dig changes look pretty nice, Retsu, on Garchomp. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> things are looking, at the very least, things are looking super fun. Uh, are you guys, um, is there anything in these Pats notes, Fez, I know you were scanning through them, anything that, like, speaks out immediately that you think might be actual meta shifting? Uh, there's, with, uh, Dragonite being nerfed, as everyone expected... Yeah. It's definitely going to open up people playing, you know, the, really with jungle, you can play everything, but I think with the Garchomp and Charizard buffs, yeah, uh, you could possibly see them. Maybe Gengar, I don't know, but it depends on the damage that that character can put out. Yeah, yeah, definitely but, the damage. Machamp's another one, people underrate, yeah. you know, level 5 coming in with the submission but that's true and what is the the buff to machamp is that dynamic punch range just got increased too right so we're, we're seeing a little bit more versatility anytime this always happens any moba where there is a movement buff in any way is going to be like gigantic for the character may not make them game defining but it is going to be huge movement speed in a game like this super important especially when pokemon unite is a very like rotate heavy game uh it's going to make it's going to make it Really big waves, I think, for sure. How about you, uh, Feppy? Any anything you else you found in the uh, anything else you found in there that you were thinking about? I haven't really found the very many things yet, but the the biggest thing to me is that there's all several fun changes in here, which are kind of nice. Uh, uh -huh. I'm always a big fan of making changes that make characters more fun just across the board. So, oh, like, yeah. Decidueye having three Spirit Shackle charges <laughs> yeah, I'm so excited. will be pretty fun. You <laughs> yeah. know, just, just sniping a bunch of people from across the map. That sounds like so much fun to me. Yeah. And then, of course, uh, you know, uh, Dream Eater resetting on kills now is going to be pretty interesting because you can Shadow Ball Dream Eater, and then you can Shadow Ball Dream Eater, and then you can Shadow Ball Dream Eater. <laughs> Yeah, re yeah, reset and kill an entire team, right? It's like Genji from Overwatch. It could be pretty fun. Yeah. Pretty interesting. Gengar doing their best Lucario E-Speed impression, I suppose. Uh, that could be a lot of fun. Gengar top lane? Yeah. Probably not. But it would be so Probably fun. Not. Probably not. <laughs> I, would, I would love that if we were to see that. But, um, yeah, we... Um, uh, so, if yeah, if you guys have anything else you want to point out about... I know Dragonite saw some nerfs. So, Dragonite with that 50% total, like, minimum Unite move percentage being used up uh, when they use it at minimum range. A, a nice change. I know it'll shut down one unfun part of Dragonite, getting those just, like, super far global global dashes to get those scores in that are just essentially unstoppable uh should slow that a little bit maybe only getting one valuable one out of a team per game it's not as heartbreaking as seeing it happen two maybe even three times in a game um so hopefully that shuts that down a little bit we saw a little bit of hyper beam nerfs thoughts on those do you th do you think this is enough to get dragonite out of the meta that's basically what i'm asking uh, once the numbers get tested and released, we'll yeah we'll see how the meta changes. So. I may be putting the cart before the horse here for sure, but I yeah. uh, <laughs> I I am excited to see it. Faz, any idea? Yeah, everything matters about numbers. I think uh, 
I never liked the character because you have to hit eight. Uh, characters where you, you know, you're kind of not useful till eight. Like, I, I like my juggler coming down for the bees prior to dread, like, somewhat strong. Okay. And that's something yeah. that pretty much every other juggler can do besides Dragonite. Yeah, that's a good point. Because they evolve at seven or they don't have to evolve at all, so. Right. Yeah, that's yeah. true. I, I, I don't know. I'm conflicted. Definitely it's a number thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think the, the thing with Dragonite, yes, you're right. That's the one weakness is they're coming down as the danger noodle for like second bees with not being that Dragonite yet. Definitely going to be a problem. But that hyper beam stack on any boss Pokemon is just ridiculous, right? And that is apparently getting touched, but we don't exactly know how impactful that will be in terms of numbers yet. So sort of a toss up. Uh, let's talk a little bit. Uh, one last thing about patch notes and new things and new toys we get to play with. A uh, little bit of data mine news. We have Aegislash coming to the game soon, as well as Trevenant. We haven't even talked about Trevenant at all. Spooky Tree, one of my legitimate favorite Pokemon is being added to the game. It may be back to back. We'll see. Um, I love the ghost Pokemon. We're seeing Trevenant in this game. I'm really, I'm not sure if any of the three of you are like mainline Pokemon fans at all. If you were that before Unite or what the crossover was, but I'm super excited to see what a move like Curse will be in Pokemon Unite. I think it's like a really cool play. Uh, so thoughts. Uh, I mean, we've seen a little bit of gameplay out of Aegislash, out of Trevenant. i uh, Who's going to play him for Team Shiny? Uh, no idea, but a lot of people oh. are saying that he may be a top laner. So yeah. you, you might be seeing a Trevenant red suit here. So, Ooh, spooky a tree. Red hype. Tree. Yeah, a drive super hype. Maybe he will be a main tank, but oh, okay. uh, a lot I of people you. are saying his skills are looking like a top laner, though. Cool. So, okay, yeah. that's awesome. Uh, yeah, how about you, Feppy? Are you excited to get your hands on the spooky tree? Oh, I'm, I'm really excited. I'll definitely yeah. be playing it a bunch. The, uh, Sweet. I, I love playing all pretty much every character in this game yeah. outside of Gengar, but now Gengar's been buffed, so... We got... Uh, the, the toy uh... chest is complete. We have collected everything. I'm uh, I'm yeah, really I'm excited, excited, too. I'm excited to get my hands on the character as well, obviously. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I don't know if either of you play other MOBAs, if you play League or Dota or anything like that, but, I mean, if we can actually classify Trevenant as a drain tank, like Swain from League, for example, or something like that, I, I do think you're right, Retsu. I think this character would be an insanely good solo push. Also, looks like it evolves at four, like these other double Evo Pokemon... That's a huge boon for it, I think. You don't have to struggle in early lane against Lucario that long. That's pretty nice. So, yeah, I think I think we're in for some uh, we're in for a good time going forward. But all right, the two of you, we have talked about new Pokemon, new meta potentially. We'll see. You got to look at the numbers. I get it. Uh, we've talked about your tournament wins going back. Let's talk about long term stuff. We got, uh, finally, we got the announcement for officially, it's being added to the World's Championship for Pokemon. Not sure if you guys are familiar at all with, like, what Pokemon World Championships is at all. I've been following the trading card game scene for a long, long time, so I've watched Worlds for, like, last, like, five years. Uh, really hype event, so now it's gonna be added to the roster. I think it'll be the fourth game there now, uh, alongside card game, video game, and Pokémon. Uh, which, if you guys haven't played Pokemon, that game's lit. Uh, you should give it a shot. But, um, yeah, definitely. So, now, finally, we have a chance to win Worlds. I think they said it's going to be 16 teams there again. Probably going to be in that situation where it's a regional, uh, certain teams from North America, certain teams from Europe. We don't know any of this officially yet, but... How do you guys think the format should play out for Worlds upcoming? Do you want to see something like qualifiers, uh, like early qualifiers being made? Would you rather this just be a straight invitational for the first Worlds Championship? I mean, we kind of have the top teams already carved out. I think you guys are safely within that top five, if not higher right now, and pretty much everyone's standards might be a boon to you. What do you guys think? Feppy, what would you like to see for a, a Worlds qualifier situation? I'd like to see a lot of lane events, honestly. Okay. I, I'd like yeah. to get. I'd like to get to a point where we could do lanes. So the, yeah. uh, it, playing on, online is nice, but you, you just it's just not the same experience playing on even on sixty ping. Yeah. You know, it's still it's still pretty fast, but like, what separates the best players from you know just the good players is also their reaction time, and when you have sixty ping attached to that, it just makes things different. Yeah, it definitely so, makes yeah, things I, better. I, team. 
in, in my opinion, the more LAN events we can play, the better. But obviously, you know, given the global situation, it's really hard to do that. But Sure. But okay, but perfect world, you'd love to see a LAN qualifier before Worlds would happen. I, I, I'd, I'd love to see, a, like, you know, like a regional qualifier for LAN. At yeah, least. cool. That's, yeah, I mean, that's, that's how like the other ones... For me. Yeah, that's how the other games that Pokemon uh, runs, it operates usually. In the past, you, you earn points at your regionals or your national events, and then you're able to and you're able to move on. But yeah, how about you, Retsu? Would you like to see uh, a qualifier before Worlds? And especially, would you like to see one on LAN? Yeah, I agree. I totally agree with Feppy. I, I think regional, national LAN events would be great. Yeah. You know, participate in your own country or like if you can afford to go you yeah. know across country it would be it'd be cool it'd be sick you know That's visiting true. other places doing uh playing uh participating in a game that you like playing it, it'd be dope seeing uh all my europe homies my japanese homies you know oh it'd be absolutely sick. It'd, be, it'd be so cool yeah yeah travel is a, a unfortunately a pricey thing but hey you're one of the few teams that's got a it's got a team name and sponsorship attached attached to you let's see uh See how deep A Drive's pockets could take you. <laughs> that'd be a that'd be a lot of fun if you guys are getting that sponsored trip out uh, to wherever. But definitely in London, ideal world. That'd be real hype. Have either of you played at any kind of LAN uh, esports event before? Whether it be like OG Halo event or something like that. Have you guys done anything like that before? Yeah, I've, I've done like um, CSGO or like Valorant League lands, like just oh, local shoot, stuff, yeah. you know. Okay, yeah. cool, sweet. Uh, so you're no uh, you're no stranger to it. Feppy, it would be the first time for you would be competing on something yeah. on LAN? Yeah, this, this would be first for me. I, okay, I have not, this is the first game I've ever tried to play at a competitive level, so. Right. Yeah, well, I mean, I, hey, good, good start, like Feppy. Good start. I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, not bad, not bad. First time ever competing, and I'm on Team Shiny. Yeah, that's yeah. true, and you're earning that paycheck and that could G4. Worse. So, <laughs> yeah, definitely could be worse in any situation. But hey, yeah. So okay, so potentially, yeah, we would love to see that land. I would love to be that land. Selfishly, I would love to be behind a microphone at that land. But hey, uh, maybe dreams can't come true with that situation. Grinding for that world's one as well. But uh. Uh, how about the prep in terms of worlds right now? Uh, right now, in we've also had the announcement from Pokemon Unite that they're going to be adding some kind of tournament client into the game. We don't know what, exactly what that looks like. We're kind of hoping they're taking a page out of Riot's handbook with their insanely successful Clash system in a lot of their games that they're running. At Wild Rift even talking about having something similar. So... It would be hype if we had some kind of tournament uh, meta, especially, again, speaking from my own experience, I would love to be, get my hands on a tool where I could run my own events in a in a tournament platform. But that, I think, may be way too much wishful thinking for something coming out uh, very soon. But a tournament set up coming in-game. How have you uh, planned to prep with your team? Are you Is your team at the point where you're starting to look for scrims? Are you trying to do a little bit of practice uh, not exactly hiding strats, but just trying to look for good practice partners. Or is ladder right now the best place for your team to practice? Uh, ladder definitely isn't the best place, but uh, we do have. A, <laughs> it's where you're at. Okay. Uh, yeah, we sure we for sure have a, a set time to practice that we try to meet. Okay. Uh, recently, we are doing more scrims. Okay. Um, cool. We're, we're trying to find more scrim partners, but we haven't practiced much as of as, after the G4 tourney because we're. We're obviously all waiting for this huge patch so yeah. we could test all the new stuff out. So that makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. Feppy, how about you? I, like, do you uh, prefer to find your practice like just grinding it out against one other team again and again, finding out what the best strategy is, or do you like just throwing noodles at the wall, seeing what sticks in a rank situation? Uh, I mean, rank is ranked is nice and all, cause uh, mm -hmm. but you're kind of on the luck of the draw whether or not you're going to get a good team or not. So sometimes sure. some of those games are a wash and it's just uh -huh. hard to learn anything from those. Yeah, oh yeah, but, that makes sense. Yeah, so but, but you know, if I'm if I'm hanging out and I just find a bunch of high level players on that isn't really my team, then mm -hmm. I'll play ranked a bunch, but for the most part if I'm with my team, I want to be playing scrims, I want to be grinding cool. it out. That's awesome. So talk to me about your scrims. You guys said you've done a little bit so far. And like, I know we've been waiting on the patch, but if you were prepping for this G4 situation and things like that, uh, how long are you sitting? Are you playing like just four games against an opponent? Are you going for a group? Like, are you doing like a 10 plus? Uh, what's this kind of, what's Team Shiny's rigorous practice schedule look like? Or maybe what will it look like in the future coming up? Uh, So... Our most recent scrim was yeah. actually against uh, TTV uh, before the right. G4 event. 
Uh, we only did a best of five because we had a player that needed to go, but gotcha. obviously, um, more practice is better. Uh, yeah. We wanted to practice uh, as long as they wanted to. So as long as TTV wanted to keep going, we were down to keep going. But uh, our players had, you know, had to go. So hey, yeah, that makes sense. But hey, cool. Yeah. I mean, playing against what uh, the community is saying is. Probably the best team in the game, still favored to win most of their events. I mean, I, I don't know if they're the best team in the game, but they're clearly uh, an insanely good team. And I mean, you guys also in that conversation now. So congratulations for, I think, really cutting your way into that. I think a lot of people already consider you top five just because of the caliber of a lot of the names on your team. I mean, like having Rinna so high on that ladder and just being a force in the community, honestly, just as a creator and player, which is a really nice strength. Retsu, your Lucario is insane. I can't stop talking about it whenever we're on a cast. You were like up there in my favorite Lucario players to cast for sure. And yeah, and, and Feppy, like you said, you're newer to the the scene but you've already broke in and won like a gigantic tournament so and i mean i know that support role gets downplayed a lot in this game especially a lot of people talking about eldegoss easy mode and all this junk but i don't think that's necessarily true i i i think there's a brain working behind those support players but uh sometimes sometimes yeah exactly um <laughs> yeah i also sorry for people in chat i realize i got a chill my auto mod out for some reason it like hates emotes so we'll get that fixed up for next time <laughs> we'll get that fixed up for next episode i want you to be able to spam your emotes as much as you possibly want for sure but okay last thing i want to talk about worlds we talked about prep we talked about what your team does to grind uh and we've obviously talked about you're excited about it we talked about drafts earlier do you want to see a tournament mode carry a draft mode into Pokemon Unite? Do you think we have enough of a roster to make it happen? If you're being realistic, I know it's more fun. I, I, I get that. I totally get it. But realistically, do you think it actually holds competitive integrity in a game with this small of a roster? Specifically, we got to talk about the lack of actual healers within the game. Not just viable healers, like actual Pokemon that do the heals. Um, Feppy, you, I didn't hear you talk as much about the draft system. Uh, what do you think? Do you think it, like, by August, we probably have a few more Pokemon on the roster. What do you think? Are we too early for drafts, or do you want to see it? Uh, I, in terms of ranked ladder, I think we're still a bit too early for drafts, just okay. purely because so many people look at support and just assume support is healer. Sure, yeah. And so, you know, everybody looks at, we only have two healers, we only have Eldegoss, we only have Blissey, mm -hmm. and one of those is clearly better than the other. <laughs> yeah. So... <laughs> But uh, Blissey hype from 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 a competitive perspective, there's a lot more heroes than just Blissey and Aldi that can fit the support role. So draft is, I think, is actually like fairly reasonable even okay. right now. Yeah, and a, a lot of people say that like you know support lock is a real thing because there's only you know two real healers in the game right now. But yeah. Yeah, there's you know there's the at a competitive level, you could pretty easily play something like Pikachu support and it'd be totally viable. Yeah. At, yeah, at I've actually level. I've been a pretty big proponent of that for a while. I mean, this MOBA specifically, it gives out the most free healing of of any other MOBA in the oh, genre. Absolutely. I mean the goal zones heal you, going to base takes you almost no time to get back into action. It's not like your channel isn't like eight seconds like it is in like league or something. Lanes are way shorter, maps smaller, there's fruit that spawn on the map that give you giant amount of healing on a one minute cooldown. Like the healing is there. It is tough if you're playing against a really high range, like out poke comp. But in a draft situation, you can plan around those things. So I think I think it's a good point, Feppy. Keep keep preaching. All right, yeah. <laughs> Retsu, how about uh, and, and from a purely competitive perspective? I mean, I mean, there's easily four supports that could you know fit the support slot. You've got Slowbro, Pikachu, Blissey, and LD that can all fit that role pretty well it's it's really hard to run that in ranked because you know everybody wants to run pikachu and wants to you know be the big damage dealer and run around with the ults and kill everyone right yeah as I got you. what people want to do on pikachu but that that character can pretty easily fit inside the support role mm -hmm. yeah it makes sense okay so you are a proponent of having draft mode in this tournament client absolutely okay oh, i want to see draft i'd love to see it okay yeah i'm with you i again I'm going to say my piece before you jump in here, Retsu. I, I don't think we will ever 
have a draft in ranked ladder it, unless it's like its own specific queue this being a mobile game and like honestly the biggest catch-all it brought me into the game so that i don't have to sit down and spend 45 minutes on a pokemon unite game i could just spend like jump it into a 10 minute game i think for a competitive standpoint i'd love to see something else for sure but as a just a draw to get people in i don't see us doing draft on ranked ladder Maybe that'll change. Maybe I'm just, uh, maybe I'm speaking for the boomers a little bit too much, but <laughs> who knows? Retsu, four worlds, do you think we will have a big enough roster, a good enough situation to have draft in a world championship setting? Uh, I, I'm with Feppy here. I do want to see it, but, okay. um, the way the, uh, the way the, if, if you've been following the JP scene, um, yeah, the Japanese scene, uh, they hosted their two tournaments without picking band, so, yeah, um, if it, if they follow if the world's cast you know follows follows that we may not see but I'm I'm a big proponent for it as well I want to okay. see the uh, draft I want to see the draft and ban because I just love seeing uh, all these uh, you know mons that are not getting shown love being picked you know <laughs> it makes people think it makes people try to uh, yeah. figure out what counters other things you know and that what's Pokemon if not rock paper scissors right so yeah. <laughs> I think I think playing that out is is a great idea and again selfishly as a color caster draft is the most fun I get to have ever uh, is where I get to just discuss all and theory craft to my heart's content so I think that makes a lot of sense but okay Awesome. We're, we're coming to the end of our time together. I don't want to hold you guys too much longer. I want to let you peruse those patch notes, discuss with your team, and figure stuff out. Uh, what I wanted to end on is both of you are obviously masters of your craft, highest level team players in your role. Uh, if you were to give just like one piece of advice to a new player, because... Let's face it, we've had a lot of huge tourneys, the, a world's announcement. It's going to be a lot of new players looking to play at a high, high level. Uh, I want to hear from each of your roles, like that top lane and support. Uh, if you were to give just one piece of advice that would separate you from being a good to a great player, what's that going to be specific to your role? Um, Feppy, why don't we start with you in that support role? What do you think pushes the good to great? Yeah, the, the number one thing is being a support is that you have to recognize that it's not your job to carry and it's not your job mm. to keep, you know, to go in and be the hero. It's it's your job to keep the hero alive, right? <laughs> it's, it, my, my, my entire responsibility on the team is to figure out what Rin wants to do and then follow him around to keep him alive. Right? <laughs> that makes a lot that, of sense. That is my entire job on the team. And mm -hmm. the, Rin is clearly a lot of the times it's the carry because he's our jungler, and yep. it, I'd boil it down to simply as just protect your carry. Do right. everything you can to keep your carry alive and enable them to do what they want to do. Makes sense. Does Rin do a lot of the shot calling for your team too? I didn't talk about team structure that much, but is that the situation in your roster? Uh, it, we don't really have a dedicated shot caller. Sure. Uh, if anyone was a dedicated shot caller on our team, it's probably Faz. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Faz probably giving out the macro, but everybody else kind of speaking into their specific situation in the moment, right? Yeah. You you all seem like a pretty good communicative team. Probably no one going dead silent the whole game because they're raging. So that <laughs> that's a good boon for your team. That makes a lot of sense. All right, Retsu, talk to me about this top lane. What do you think separates a good top laner from a fantastic top laner? Uh, I have several small quick tips for you. So, uh, sure. Just manage tune into your your, tune to this man's stream if you really want to learn how. Yeah. But this is just the quick blurb. <laughs> yeah, just manage your EXP, get your last hits, uh, wait for your jungler, obviously, to gank. Okay. Uh, win first win first piece That's and big. then rotate to first dread. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> rotate to first dread. Okay. The uh the hard supportive team <laughs> top laner. We don't see mm -hmm. people like you every day, Retsu. So that's that's great to hear about. Uh, a little bit too much rumors of top lanes like not me. I I play main tank, but when I do play top lane, I always rotate for sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, that brings us to the end of our Overdog episode. Guys, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, I'm going to let my guests give one last chance to sell out, shout out, whatever you want to. So plug your socials here, guys. Where can people find you? Where can they watch you? Where can they follow you? Uh, Retsu, how about you first? Uh, you can find me on Twitter and Twitch at shiny underscore Retsu. And uh, yeah, that's that's my handle for right. Twitch and Twitter. Sweet. Okay, how about you, Feppy? I haven't quite gotten the YouTube channel started up yet. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, me I, neither. <laughs> I, stream, I stream on I stream on Twitch a bunch at uh, Peppy TTV. Okay. 
Awesome. Okay, so go follow these two guys if you want to learn how to be just like Team Shiny in your ranked games. Um, I have been Zoinks, uh, Josh Hebert. Uh, if you are just getting into Pokemon Unite now and you're just learning about the competitive scene, there is no better place to go to go see hours and hours of footage of high-level tournament games that the Unite Mics YouTube. We've cataloged and casted over so many tournaments, so many high-level. Honestly, it's a great little storybook of the early start of Unite. So go check it out. You can follow me at ZoinksCast on uh, Twitter. Thank you for everyone who turned to the Twitch and followed live. Follow on YouTube, of course, as well. But for me, for Feppy, for Faz, and for uh, Retsu, thank you so much for joining us. This has been Overdunk. Have a great week.